I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with the greatest gift that mankind can receive, the gift of Islam. And on top of that, Allah has blessed us with Iman. Because if we don't have Iman, we wouldn't have sit here tonight, today. Many Muslims are outside. They're not in the masjid. Their names are Muhammad and Ibrahim. But because of a lack of Iman, they are not in the masjid. And on top of that, my dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah has blessed us to be in the Ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Akhira Ummati, the last Ummah. But Al-Awwal Ummati satathulul Jannah. But the first Ummah that I will have the privilege to enter Jannah first. Wa nashkurullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam ya'mat al-afiya lana wa ahlina. وأقربائنا وأصدقائنا ووالدينا وجميع المسلمين. and I thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for giving us health. how many brothers and sisters would long to be in the masjid today, but unfortunately they can't leave the sick bed that they are in, or they can't leave the house. we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for our friends and our family members, and most of all we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for our parents. Those of us who still have parents. Those of us who lost a father or a mother, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must give them a high place in Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, history tells us that the Muslim ummah over hundreds of years always experienced difficulties, hardships, dangers, and challenges. But during those days, the Muslims stood together, one unified unit. They stood together, they fought together, and they died together. They understood and believed and practiced the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying so beautifully, بَعْضَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إن هذه الأمة أمتكم أمة واحدة وأنا ربكم فعبدون. They believed that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying truly this ummah of yours is one ummah and I am your Lord therefore worship me. Imagine my dear brothers believing in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala firmly with conviction. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the doer of everything. That we are one ummah standing together, not separated, not scattered, together, inshallah, and we will be victorious. Although the Muslim ummah went through so many difficulties and hardships, they loved and trust, trusted each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them victorious and the leaders of the world at that time. With this unified front, the, the ummah of those days, the Muslims of those times, they were loving to, amongst each other. They were caring towards each other. They were sharing with each other. And they trusted one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in another ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa admamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al islam al deena. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, This day I perfected your religion for you. I completed my favor upon you and I have chosen Islam as your religion. Imagine, my dear brothers. That the way we live, the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just multiplied. Allah is saying here, because of the way the Muslims lived in those days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed His pleasure with them. Allah was happy with them. For indeed they stood together as one ummah. And because they stood together as one ummah, Allah always made them victorious after the hardships that they felt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters, promised success for us also, but only after we are willing to work tirelessly 
for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As brothers or as sisters in Islam, we should work together with clean hearts and clean intentions so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be pleased with us also and make us proper as a Muslim ummah and a Muslim community as a whole. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, the ideal Islamic community is not founded on race, nationality, locality, occupation, family status, or any other special interests. Also, it was never named of a specific leader or founder. The foundation of the ideal Islamic community is following the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practicing the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Success, my dear brothers, in every person's mind is different. Many of us will say, I want my son or my daughter to be successful. I will send her to this university and that university. Because if she's got money or he's got money in his pocket, he's got a good job, he's got a good car, he's got a good wife and a big house, we call this success. But we have forgotten the difference between the Muslims of those days and us today. Success in their eyes and in our eyes is totally different. For them, success was in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to follow the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is success today to us? What does it mean to us? Which school do you attend? Which university do you attend? Dunya, my dear brothers. Al-haya fi hadhi dunya qasiratun ajli wa haya fi jannah abadiyatan. Don't be deceived by this world. For indeed this world is but very short. But the year after, the life in the year after in Jannah will be everlasting. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ba'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem, Wa'altaku minkum ummatun yada'una ila al-hayr, wa ya'muruna bil-ma'rufi, wa inhawna nil-munkar, wa ulaika humul muflihoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Quran, my dear brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Quran, and many a times we must ponder about the Quran, whether we believe everything or we believe certain parts of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there must be a, a group amongst you advocating, inviting to the good, demanding with right and forbidden the wrong, and that group will indeed be successful. Look at the word successful, my dear brothers. Success, we are wondering what is success. We are coming to this beautiful country of Qatar from all over the world. We are sitting in this masjid today from different parts of the world, coming because we want a better life for our families. Many of us, our families, our wives and children are at home. And we're making the sacrifice here in Qatar, alhamdulillah. Money is better here, we can give our families a better life. But remember, success is in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Success is, is to follow the, the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must remember that our beloved Prophet, the best person was that was created, the person that was created as rahmatulil alameen, as a mercy to mankind. He was the most successful person. And if you look at the history, what Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had of this dunya, it makes us ponder. If success was in the wealth of this world, our beloved Prophet would have been the richest person. But our Prophet had nothing. When he was lying on his deathbed, he said to, to his daughter Fatima, Ya Fatima, look in the house. Look for something, a date. Go outside and look for somebody that I owe something. That I said a bad word to. Then you take the date and you give it to the person and say he must forgive me. Fatima comes back to her beloved father and says, my dear beloved father, there's nothing in the house. It makes me think, what is success? If success was this dunya, our beloved prophet would have been the richest person. But success is in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That is why Nabi Muhammad Wasallam he focused on what was real success for him. One day, my dear brothers, during the late hours of the morning, Nabi Muhammad Wasallam was, he was, he heard two people talking outside. He went outside and he saw Abu Bakr Sadiq anhu and Umar anhu outside. And they were talking. <coughs> Nabi Muhammad Wasallam went to them and asked them, why this time of the night you are outside? They said, Ya Rasulullah, we are too shy to tell you. They said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said to them, Don't, there's no secrets between us, tell me. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we are so hungry. We are so hungry, we couldn't sleep. We keep each other company so that the, the day can start again. But then they asked Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the same question, Ya Rasulullah, did we wake you up? Ya Rasulullah, we ask you to forgive us if we woke you up. He said, no, I was awake. And they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why were you awake at this, at this time of the night? He said, I don't want to tell you. He said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Habibullah, he lift up his soap and there was two stones attached to his stomach. He said, I am awake for the same reason that you are awake. That the beloved of Allah was so hungry that he couldn't sleep. We ask ourselves again, what is success? What is success? Look in the streets, how we rush every day from the house to the work and how we deal with each other. We don't have respect for each other. We are just rushing because I am accumulating. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, the ideal Muslim community should be a happy community. Untroubled with conflicts, strong and united and prosperous. Why, my dear brothers? Because this community invites to the good and forbids the wrong and the evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Kuntum khayra ummati ughrijat li nas, ta'amruna bil ma'roof, wa tanhawna ni munkar, wa tu'minuna billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying for you and to me, He's saying that you people, my ummah, you have been taken out as the best of people, as a guidance to mankind. But you have to call to the good and you have to prevent the evil. And you have to believe firmly in me that there's one Allah. My dear beloved brothers, listen to what Allah is saying. That I have taken you out as, the gui as a guidance to mankind. As a guidance to mankind. But we have to call to the good and we have to prevent the evil. Where are we today, my dear brothers? Are the non-Muslims and those who don't believe in the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are they following us? Or are we following them? Think about it. Allah promised us, I've taken you out as, as guiders, as, the gui as a guidance for mankind. The best ummah, khaira ummati, the best ummah, the best people. To guide the rest of mankind. Today, we are guided by others. That is why we have all these troubles. As Muslims, my dear brothers and sisters, we should be sincere in our actions and our dealings. As Muslims, we should respect one another. Whether it's a Muslim or a non-Muslim, we should respect one another. Respect the non-Muslim. So that they can also see the beauty of Islam. And so that they also can come into the fold of Islam. Remember, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come to this ummah as rahmatul lil muslimin. No, he came as rahmatul lil alameen. Those people that are not Muslim, they must get the message from us. La ilaha illallah. There's no God but Allah. And follow Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every single person must get that message. And we, we are Muslim. We have to understand this message so clearly. So that on the day of Qiyamah, we don't point fingers, but fingers should be pointed to ourselves that we didn't call to the good and we didn't prevent the evil. So my dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying the following, the example of the way the true believers care for each other is like one body. 
When one member suffers, the whole body suffers. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that my ummah is like one body. If one part of the body feels pain, the whole body must feel the pain. Are we like this today? My one brother's got a problem. Do I really go out of my way to assist him, to help him? Or we just push him aside and say, that's your problem. I've got my own problems to deal with. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is saying to us, the ummah is one body. If one part of the body feels pain, the whole body feels the pain. If our brothers and sisters are suffering in Sudan, in Syria, in Palestine, wherever in the world, we should feel that pain, my dear brothers. Even if we can't be there to assist them physically, but we can make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must make it easy for them, inshallah ta'ala. As Muslims, look at this simple example. A candle. As Muslims, we should be like a candle. When you light that candle, many people will get the benefit of the light. We should be like a candle. Imagine. Simple example. A candle. Not a candle only for me and my family. You know, many of us, when we enter our houses, we don't care what's happening outside. That candle only for my family? No. That candle for whoever can get the light from me. Whomever I can help and assist, let him get part of this light. And what is that light, my dear brothers? What is this candle? La ilaha illallah. The light that should be spread around the world. That candle that is la ilaha illallah. And the light that is spreading around the world is for people to come and into the fold of Islam. Because we have neglected. We have neglected our beautiful deen. That is why people are not following us. This one alim was making a very simple example. He says, you know, today he says, you find the white person, the European, walking with his dog, and there's a leash on the dog. The dog is 10 meters in front. This European person, not, not a Muslim, is walking. And today we are following that European person, and the dog is in front. We as Muslims are following them. My dear brothers, we have to look in our own hearts. How dedicated am I for this beautiful deen of Islam? What do I do for my, for my Allah? How many sunnahs do I practice? How much do I love my Prophet? These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves, inshallah ta'ala. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, If the hour were to occur, and you have a seed or a small plant in your hand, and you are able to plant it, there's still time to plant it, then plant it. Subhanallah. This shows and demonstrates that we are living in this world to help others. Even if we are on the verge of dying, the hour means that it's time for death. It is time for death. I am on, my, on the verge of dying. Death is here. So put that seed in the ground because someone else can benefit from the sacrifices you made when you were still alive. This is the hadith of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Don't think about yourself. Leave a legacy behind that others can benefit. What is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa saying? Do things that others can benefit from you. The best amongst you are those who study Quran and teach it to others. Sadaqatul Jariya, it moves on. You're planting a tree, others can benefit from the shade. You have a water tap outside your house, others can get the water. Leave something behind, plant a seed so that your whole family, your grand and grandchildren can benefit. What benefit? Benefit the deen of Islam. Today we are planting seeds of dunya. We are planting seeds because my house is not big enough. What will my children inherit? My bank account is not big enough. What will my children inherit? But what of the deen will my children inherit? What akhlaq of deen will my children inherit? Our eyes sometimes, you know, it's like if we have veils on our eyes and our ears, we don't see properly. We don't hear properly. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the life in this world is short. We're all going to die. Kullu nafsin We're going to die. 
Nobody knows when he's going to die. I can stand here today. You can sit here today. I'm healthy, strong. I can get in my car and I get an accident and I die. Today I'm healthy. Tomorrow the doctors will say that I've got cancer. I've got some type of problem and I will die. Question is, are we ready to, make, to meet our Allah? Are we ready to meet our Allah? That should be our concern. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, very simple, one sentence, inshallah, and we try to practice it. Live every single day like if it's our last day. Live every single day like if it's our last day. Imagine, my dear brothers, the doctors told me this morning, this is my last day. How will I in interact with my brothers and sisters? How will I interact with my father and my mother? How will I interact with my children? What kind of salah will I make? I will still make salah and my mind go to my business. No, I will be so fully concentrated. I will be concentrating only in Allah. Ya Allah, this is the last time I'm making Fajr Salah. Ya Allah, this is the last time I'm making Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib. Ya Allah, this is the last time. Ya Allah, accept my Salah. We live today like if it's our last day. When you come tired from home, the last day, my dear brothers, you see your wife, will you be rude to her? Your children come running to you, will you push them away? It is your last day. You will embrace your wife. You will embrace your children. You will kiss and love them and hug them. You will be good to your family. You will be good to your wife. You will be good to everybody around you. Why? Because I know it's my last day. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, imagine every day is our last day. We take every day as our last day. Because when we close our eyes at night, it's like if we are dead, we don't know what's happening to us. That is why in the morning when we wake up, we make dua and we say, Ya Allah, another day you have blessed me with. Another day. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of another day. I make so many mistakes every day. I'm such a rude person. I disrespect people. I'm rude to people. Ya Allah, but alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, you love me so much. You have blessed me with yet another day. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much for all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. Another beautiful example of how the ummah should be is mentioned that the ummah should be like a brick wall. All of us like bricks together, standing together, so nobody can push us around. Steady, strong, as one unified ummah, like one body. Nobody can touch us. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, I hope inshallah that we will ponder about what I was saying. The words is for me first, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must change my life first, that I can see where success and what really is success. That I have the understanding of the shortness of this life. That I have the understanding of this ayat of Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Kullu nafsin maut. Small ayat. That each and every person will taste death. Nobody knows when this will happen to us. May we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, must make us successful in this world and in the akhirah. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, We know if we look into our own lives, we look into our own mirror and we ask ourselves of the examples that I've made, am I like the person on the verge of dying but I first want to plant the seed for others to benefit? Or am I that candle that I want to lit so that others can benefit from the light that I will spread? Or am I that brick that forms part of the wall that is so steady? that nobody can push around? Or am I part of that ummah, that when one lymph get pain, the whole body will feel the pain? Which one of these am I? Which shoe fits me? Which one of these examples befit me and you? If there's none, we should be worried. What happened to us? If those qualities that I've just mentioned, if those are not into our lives, 
We should look in our mirror. We should look at ourselves into our own hearts and ask, where did I miss the objective? Where did I misunderstand what Allah wants from me? My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, as Muslims, we have, have we lost our trust in one another? Are we cheating and stealing from one another? Are we jealous of one another? Are we talking more bad than good to one another uh, about each other? Are we of those who first want to know? Before you help a person, you first want to know who is this person? Where does he live? Who, which family does he belong to? What kind of work does he do? What qualification does he have? before we help him. Isn't that what is happening to us also? Looking, look at your, your circle of friends today. Many of us, we don't have friends that is beneath us. We want friends that are higher class. But this is not the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is not what Allah is teaching us. This is not the sunnah. Isn't this why we are in all these troubles and difficulties that we are in today? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to come back to the Quran and the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Kul in kuntu hibboon Allahi fattabi'uni If you say you love me, Allah, follow me, who is me? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you say you love Allah, follow the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we look into our own lives, what sunnah am I following? I run to the masjid, alhamdulillah. The call was made and I ran. Am I following the sunnah? Yes, alhamdulillah. What other sunnahs are we following? Look where we're working today. You go to your job. There's so much problems. There's so much headaches. Why? Because we're not following Quran and Sunnah. Look in our families today. Problems in the families. Problem husband and wife. Problem between parents and children. Why? We are not following Quran and Sunnah in the house. Ma fi muhabba. Ma fi muhabba bayna muslimin. We don't trust, trust each other. We don't care for each other. We don't have time for each other. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, this caring, this love for each other, this trust for each other should come back in our lives. My dear brothers, if you listen to what I'm saying, it's not big words that I'm using. It's simple words that I'm using. Come back to the basics of Islam so that our lives can improve. Come back to the basics of Islam so that Allah can put more barakah into our lives. My dear brothers, in this place that we are living, in this beautiful country of Qatar, we are earning money. But I tell you also, today you have a thousand riyal. Tomorrow you say to yourself, what happened to the money? We should live according to Quran and Sunnah so that Allah can put barakah into our lives. So that Allah can put happiness in, in our families. So that Allah can put happiness and the sunnah into our lives. So that our, we can be happy in our work as well. My dear brothers, one incident happened to me. I was teaching at one school. And of course, in whatever subject I teach, I implement the way of Quran and sunnah. And I was teaching the children 9, 10 years old in one school, British curriculum school. And then one morning... One of my girls in the classroom, nine years old, came very sad in the classroom. And I said, but what's wrong? Why are you sad? She said, sir, me and my mother and my aunt, we went to shopping for my Eid clothes. And alhamdulillah, I told my mother I want long clothes because I don't want my figure to show. My teacher told me the figure must not show. Alhamdulillah, the mother agreed and they bought the beautiful clothes for her. Alhamdulillah, she's happy. After a while, she says to the mother, but now my mother, and now the only thing I need is a nice big scarf to cover myself. And then the aunt said to her, my dear child, you are so young. 
You don't need a scarf now. We're going to spoil your, your, your outlook, how you look. It's going to spoil if you cover yourself with a scarf. And the child starts to cry. She says to her mother and to this aunt of hers, my teacher told me that if I make Allah happy, Allah will make me happy. If I practice my deen properly as a young girl, to practice my beautiful deen when I'm older will become easy. Allah Akbar. May all our children, inshallah, have this understanding that inshallah start early, bend the tree when it's still young. So inshallah that when we are big and our children are big, we don't have the problems of our children, especially the girls, to cover themselves properly. Our boys to know when the adhan is going off. No need to tell our children the adhan is going off for salah. They will know how they need, they need to know that it's time to go for salah. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to make so much tawbah. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for all the wrong that we do every single day, knowingly and unknowingly. We must do so much good deeds, inshallah, in the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Time is so short. Let's take every moment as important. Let's take every moment as our last moment. Let's do good deeds, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Be 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 besides our salah, our fasting, our going for hajj, all the other, the faraid of Islam, besides that, let's do good to each other. Let's reach out to each other. Not money, you don't only need money, you can be good to each other. Listen to this hadith when Nabi Sallallahu is saying, لا تخكرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلك أخاك بوجه تليك أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, the smallest good deed in the eyes of people is small. But the smallest good deed in the eyes of Allah is great. Even if you just meet your brother with a smile. Meeting your brother with a smile, my dear brothers, it doesn't cost money. It costs courage. Courage. And imagine the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you. So inshallah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must make it easy for all of us, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us of those people that will always keep fast to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of those who follow the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our communities, communities of deen, united and prosperous. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our parents. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive and guide our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our sick, those that are in hospitals, those brothers and sisters that are in prison, those countries where there's war and difficulty. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the suffering of the ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist and help and to make it easy for the Muslim brothers and sisters in Sudan, in Yemen, in Syria, in Palestine, and wherever the Muslim ummah is suffering, Ya Allah, make it easy for them, inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give our loved ones who left this dunya, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must give them a high place in Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama salli ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim. Fil alameen innaka hamidun majid. Wa qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Arhama ummati bi ummati Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiallahu anhum. وفاتبة سيدة النساء لأهل الجنة رضي الله عنها وحسن حسين رضي الله وحسن وحسين الشباب لأهل الجنة رضي الله عنهما الله الله مع عزة الإسلام والمسلمين الله مع عزة الإسلام والمسلمين الله مع عزة الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداك دين يا رب العالمين ربنا ذلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا أذاب النار وأدحنا الجنة من الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا مولانا يا رب العالمين إباد الله رحمكم الله 
Innallahu ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa itai dhul kurba wa yanhani al fakhshai wa munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun uzkurullah ya al-adhima yadhkurkum ud'uhu yastajib lakum wala dhikrullah ta'ala a'la wa awla wa akbar wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un